Dumb Husky and His White Cat She's Un. Chapter 165 She's Un, it's him. The claw which had been infused with spiritual power, was suddenly pulled back, bringing with it a large patch of bright red. Nangong Liu's mouth opened and closed, then closed, and opened again, but he couldn't utter a single word. It seemed like he didn't expect that Su Suanglin would make a hole in his back. After a long time, he finally spat out a large mouthful of blood and knelt stiffly on the ground. Father! Ah! Nangong sees blood-curdling screams tore through the sky. Sect leader! Everyone was shocked. Su Suanglin calmly crouched down and casually took out a fruit from his kinkin pouch. He then stuffed the fruit into Nangong Liu's mouth and forced him to swallow it. Mo Ran's eyes were sharp and his expression immediately changed. Lingqi fruit. The fruit that Su Suanglin fed to Nangong Lu was precisely the Lingqi fruit that had kept the members of the feathered tribe alive at the Peach Blossoms Spring. It was the fruit that makes one beg for death. Nangong Lu was in so much pain that he wished he was dead. His entire body curled up on the ground like a shrimp as he trembled violently. Su Suanglin looked at him. The light from the fire reflected in his eyes, making them look very warm. Sect leader, I pity you. You've lived for most of your life being but a good for nothing under the manipulation of others. Ye Wangzi said in horror, Yufu. Father, let go of my father. Let go of him. In the end, blood was thicker than water. Even though Nangong Lu is in precarious situation, Nangong Si couldn't bear seeing him in such a miserable state. His hair stood up in anger and he attacked Su Suanglin. However, Su Suanglin single-handedly blocked him with a defensive barrier. Su Suanglin rolled his eyes and coldly glanced at him. When the elders are talking, the younger ones shouldn't interrupt. Neil. After he finished speaking, he pointed his finger in the air. Nangong Si only felt as if a thousand caddies had fallen on his back. He couldn't stand up. He clenched his teeth and endured for a moment. He tried to muster his strength but he still ended up knelt heavily on the ground. Ah Si. Ye Wangzi immediately stood in front of Nangong Si. She couldn't point her sword at Su Suanglin, but she couldn't just stand by and watch this. For a moment, her expression was both painful and dazed. Yufu, please don't hurt him. Who cares who wants to hurt him? What is he? Su Suanglin turned his gaze back to Nangong Lu. Then, he raised his leg and kicked Nangong Liu's bloody face. It's been so many years. Now that we're in front of the world's heroes, I can't help but want reminisce with this person. Nangong Lu coughed out a large mouthful of blood. Reminis? Didn't you tell me that as long as I called back Luo Fenghua's soul from the infinite hell, I'd be able to break the curse he put on me? I'd be able to recover and never fear, never fear the night again. You lied to me. You actually. You actually lied to me. Hearing this, the young cultivators didn't react, but the expressions on the face of those of Xue Zhenjiang's generation all changed. Xue Zhenyang abruptly looked at the mutilated corpse. Luo Fenghua. It's Luo Fenghua. Lying on the ground was the body of the Nangong brother's master from many years ago, the short-lived sect leader who had once usurped power, the only sect master with a different surname in the Rufeng sect, Luo Fenghua. You have such a vivid imagination. Su Suanglin said with a smile. Break the curse? You killed him with your own hands back then. Now you drank his blood and ate his flesh. You're so cruel, but you still want to break the curse? You're really naive. Why shouldn't I drink his blood and eat his flesh? Although I have stolen his position and power and sent him to his death, he left a curse in the sect leader's ring before he died. It's been more than 10 years since I have put this ring on. Since then there hasn't been a single day, cough cough, there hasn't, not a single day, that I've been able to live a normal life at night. Don't tell me. I shouldn't. You should. Su Suanglin blandly expressed his agreement. You really should. Suddenly, 
his face twisted into a smile. He simply squatted down, lifted Nangong Liu's face and said, You did very well. No one can do better than you, no one can be more outstanding and no one can be more obedient. Sect Master, no one can be more stupid than you. With a sinister smile, he concluded, Trash. After Su Suonglin finished speaking, he slowly stood up. Unexpectedly, with a solemn and gentle smile on his face, he spread his arms and said cordially to everyone, Honored guests, the banquet is over but I still have some desserts here that I'd like to invite everyone to sample together. Someone angrily shouted, Su Suonglin. What do you intend to do? Nothing actually. I just want to share interesting stories to everyone. The Rufeng sect has long looked down on the rest of the cultivation world for hundreds of years and yet, their horrid stinking scandals are too many to mention. Among these nasty tales, there's one that I've been wanting to share for more than ten years. Today, I'm going to announce it to the public in front of the whole world. As he spoke to this point, his voice turned from high-pitched to gentle. Then, he softly said, this is probably the last part of the secret history of the Rufeng sect. When Nangong Lu heard him say this, a strong fear suddenly welled up in his heart. He rapidly stammered, and his lips trembled. He almost couldn't speak, but his eyes were fixed on the person standing above the lava. You. Who the hell, are you? Su Suonglin turned his face and smiled, but he didn't answer. Suddenly, a ray of light shone in his hand, and a dagger appeared in his palm. He gripped it hard and cut his skin, causing blood to gush out from the palm of his hand. He dipped it in the blood and drew a formation on his arm. Then, he gently blew on it and said, The small boat at the west window brings you into dreams. Then he turned his head and smiled. Sect leader, if you want to know who I really am, you'll know everything after you see these things. Mo Ran wanted to stop him, but he was gently stopped by Chu Wanning. She's on. It's not an evil curse, it's a dream recall enchantment. It's very similar to the special technique of the Peach Blossom Springs Feathered Tribe. It's a spell that allows everyone to see his memories. Chu Wanning said. Wait a moment. Let's see what he wants to say. The brilliance of the formation that Su Suonglin blew into the wind flowed. It flew higher and higher, continuously expanding. In an instant, the entire Ganquin Lake was enveloped by the formation. The fragmented memories were like sand powder, slowly falling from the sky. The surface of the lake was quickly covered by Su Suonglin's memories. It was as if the snow had replaced the ground with a new layer of snow. As the power of the formation continued to overflow, the scene changed. Although everyone was still standing around the Ganquin Lake, the vegetation and lava in front of them were fading away. In the end, it turned into the appearance of the Rufeng Sex Flying Jade Pavilion. In this illusion, the Flying Jade Pavilion was empty. There were only two people in it, one standing and one sitting. The one standing was barefooted and dressed casually. His hair was not combed properly. The crown on his head was even a little crooked. He was Su Suonglin. The one sitting was wearing a dark red robe and had a pale face. He was Nangong Lu. Nangong Lu stroked the sect leader's thumb ring that was inlaid with a dark green jade. His face flickered with an excited and anxious light. Then, are the five holy weapons ready? Su Suonglin lazily said, You've already asked me that for the ninth time. If you ask me for the tenth time today, I'm going to quit. Nangong Lu was unable to control his emotions. He couldn't help but shake his legs. All right, all right. Then let's wait for all the guests to arrive. Let's wait for the day of sea air sweating. Let me take a look at the list of sacrificial offerings. I want to see how many of the people on the list haven't arrived yet. Su Suonglin threw him a book and Nangong Lu immediately flipped through the list impatiently. His gaze was fanatical like a thirsty person finally having a drink of water. He flipped through the book until the sound of hua hua could be heard. He counted once, but he was still unsatisfied, 
so he counted a second time. His finger poked at the pages as if he wanted to poke a hole in the page. They're all here. Su Suanglin saw that he was crazily chanting and said, there are more than twenty people with pure essences of the five elements. In addition, you've organized the five elements spiritual force guards over the years. With the power of these people's spiritual cores and the help of the holy weapons, although the power is not as strong as directly using the essence of spiritual bodies, it's enough. I guarantee that we can open the gates of hell with this. Nangong Lu clenched the book and nodded repeatedly. All right. But this is the last good opportunity. If you mess it up again, I'm afraid it'll be even more difficult for you to break the curse. You can't mess it up. Su Suanglin lazily said, you should say, you won't mess it up. All right. Fine, fine. I won't mess it up, I won't mess it up. Nangong Lu paused and said, Xuanglin, I'm still worried. Let's go over the plan again. Big brother, you've already done it ten or twenty times. Nangong Lu didn't care. A few more times then. It's always better to be cautious. Su Suanglin looked a little helpless. Fine, as you wish. Nangong Lu calculated and said, on the eve of sea air's wedding, all the guests will come to the hall of music and poetry. I'll arrange to draw lots and pick the 21 pieces that have been marked in advance. He looked up at Su Suanglin. Then it's your turn. All right, I'll ask to be included in the hunt. Su Suanglin had no choice but to agree. After entering the forest, I'll lead the sacrifices to the Ganquin Lake and plant the Zhenlong chess pieces in them. They'll then be obedient and give their spiritual power to the holy weapons. After this is done, I'll manipulate everyone to shoot the firework signal into the sky and tear open the barrier of hell. Good, good. Unlike Su Suanglin's sluggishness, Nangong Lu seemed to be very excited. He continued to talk about strategy on the paper. After seeing the fireworks, I will lead the five groups of guards and rush to the hunting grounds to meet up with you while pretending it was to address the matter of the heavenly rift. After that, we will turn the five groups of guards into Zhenlong chess pieces and sacrifice them. Su Suanglin nodded and concluded, there shouldn't be any mistakes. There can't be any mistakes. Nangong Lu clenched his thumb ring, and his face turned blue. I've had enough, I've had enough. He muttered for a while, then suddenly looked up and asked Su Suanglin, Suanglin, is it really alright to not use the essence of the spiritual body? What if the power of the holy weapons were not pure enough? Don't worry, these five holy weapons are the best of the best, the peak of the peak. They have the ability to move mountains and fill seas. After absorbing the spiritual power of the sacrifices, they will succeed. What if? And I'm just I'm saying what if, what if the gate of the infinite hell can't be opened? What if, like in Kaidi town, someone comes out to stop us, like that Chu Wanning? Nangong Lu spat. What elder you hang? What a busybody. Last time in Kaidi town, I killed him by a stroke of luck. It was supposed to be a good thing, but who knew that old bald donkey Huizhui had the ability to bring him back from the dead what a hateful pair. When Mo Ran saw this, he was furious. Back then during the chaos at Kaidi town, Rufeng Sek sent a large number of cultivators to help out. Hundreds of disciples from Rufeng Sek died in that bloody battle. These two people were well aware of that fact, then who exactly was the fake Gushin? Was it Nangong Lu or Su Suanglin? Chu Wanning's life is not meant to end. Su Suanglin said in the illusion, he's a capable person. It's a pity that he died so easily. So what if he's capable? I just can't stand that arrogant face of his. Oh, now that you mention it, I remember now. Sect leader, you saw Chu Wanning a few days ago, right? How was it? Since he came back from the dead, was his spiritual power damaged in any way? I don't know about his spiritual power, but his temper didn't decrease in the slightest. Nangong Lu said resentfully, he still act high and mighty, 
and he considers everyone beneath him. In front of him, I'm like a fucking dog that rolled in the mud. Su Suanglin laughed. That's an interesting analogy, sect leader. It would have been better if you didn't mention it, but now that you did, I can help but be infuriated. I'm the sect leader of the number one sect in the world but not only do I have to nod and bow to Chu Wanning, I also had to play nice in front of that disciple of his. That disciple of his is so outrageous. Grand Master Mo does not know how to follow the rules and his temper was even worse than his Shizun. He took a deep breath, and a malicious glint flashed in his eyes. He's such a good spiritual source of wood essence though. I truly hate the fact that I had to resort to using a holy weapon instead of using his flesh just like I had originally planned. Using him, I'm sure we won't have any problem tearing open a gate to hell. We already failed twice in capturing him in Jinchinj Lake and in the Peach Blossom Spring. Su Suanglin said, then, he traveled alone for five years. During those five years, we couldn't find his whereabouts. The only time we had almost successfully managed to lure him into a trap was when he was heavily injured by the Yellow River Drought Demon. However, that young man was really lucky and was saved by Zhang Shi, who was passing by. Now, Mo Ran's wings are fully grown and he's no longer the same as when he was a 16 or 17 years old youth. None of us can touch him. You have to give up on this one. Just wait and see. Nangong Lu said angrily, when I break the curse, my power will increase greatly. At that time, whether it's Grand Master Chu or Grand Master Mo, they'll have to kneel in front of me and listen to my orders. When Su Suanglin heard him say this, he just smiled and didn't say anything. Nangong Lu seated for a while and gradually calmed down. He stared at the ring on his hand and suddenly said, Suanglin, five years ago, you gave up looking for the wood essence spiritual body. It wasn't just because Mo Ran left the mountain to travel and disappeared, right? Slowly looking up from the ring, Nangong Lu said, it was also because you continued to investigate and found that the best earth essence spiritual body was Ye Wangzi, right? You were reluctant to sacrifice your adopted daughter after all she's your only family in this world. I have no family in this world. Su Suanglin interrupted him expressionlessly. What's more, sect leader, you know that the best fire essence spiritual body is your son. Even if I was willing to give up Ye Wangzi, would you be willing to sacrifice Si? Forget it. Nangong Lu waved his hand and said with a sad expression, since the holy weapons can be used as replacement, what else is there to say? Let's not talk about it anymore. What if the holy weapon is not a suitable replacement? Nangong Lu was shocked, what do you mean? Didn't you say that there would be no mistakes? Sect leader, there's no need to be so nervous. I was just suddenly curious. If in this world, the only way to successfully create a heavenly rift was to use those five living spirits and use sea air as a sacrifice, I wonder what choice would the sect leader make? Would he continue to endure the pain of the curse, or? There was a hint of mockery at the corner of his mouth as he let the thought trail in the air. Nangong Lu didn't answer. After a long time, so long that everyone thought this memory was going to end, Nangong Lu softly said, every man for himself, and the devil takes the hindmost. Hearing him say this, everyone's face changed, especially Xue Zhenyong, who loved his son as much as his life. He couldn't understand Nangong Liu's choice at all. He said angrily, ridiculous. Even a vicious tiger won't eat its own offspring. In order to live, you're willing to sacrifice your own son? This is simply absurd. Nangong Si stood stiffly in the same place. There was a blank expression on his face. His eyes were empty. The scene turned black. Those sparkling memory fragments flipped over and over again, making the tinkling sound of colliding wind chimes. When the illusion lit up again, the sky was high and the clouds were vast. The towering snow mountain reflected a dazzling white light. Someone exclaimed, is that Jinchinj Lake? End chapter.
Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 166. Shizun's Respect for Madame Rong. It was indeed the Jinjinj Lake. The inscription of the path forward is difficult on the side of the lake was written in bright red. There were only two living people in the scene, Nangong Lu and Su Suonglin. The reason it has to be pointed out that there were only two living people was because there were countless dead people lying on the ground. Or it could be said that there were dead bodies of mer people. Hurry up. If we seal the path and don't let other cultivators go up the mountain, I'm afraid it will arouse suspicion. It's almost done. Su Suonglin stuffed a black chess piece into a merperson's mouth and then silently chanted a spell. That merperson person stood up shakily from the ground and bowed to the two of them. With a plop, it jumped back into the Jinjinj lake that was filled with floating ice shards. Su Suonglin said, I'm not very good with this forbidden technique yet. When I'm more familiar with it, I won't need to feed them chess pieces one by one. I just need to point in the air and they will accept my orders and be at my disposal. It's that powerful. How can it be called a forbidden technique otherwise? Though, even if you cultivate to that level, it's just the tip of the iceberg. I've seen people. Su Suonglin suddenly stopped talking and smiled. I meant, I've seen records in books of someone who can easily control countless chess pieces even if they were conscious living beings. That's how powerful it can be. At my level, I can only control the body, but I can't control the mind. I'm still far from that. Nangong Lu nodded. You don't need to cultivate that well. It's not a good thing to attract attention. You're right, sect leader. But it's good that you thought of this method. To break my curse, you need to open the infinite hell and to open the infinite hell, you need to have the spiritual power of the five elements of metal, wood, water, fire, and earth essences. It's not easy to find the essence of spiritual bodies in this world. We can't test them one by one but by using the Jinjinj Lake, testing the spiritual core of those cultivators who were looking for holy weapons became so easy. It's like sitting back and enjoying the fruits of other people's labor. As he spoke, he took out an orange from a pouch on the horse beside him and peeled it. As he ate, he praised, Xuanglin, those monsters in the Jinjinj Lake can't even defeat you. You're really capable. Su Xuanglin smiled. Although the Jinjinj Lake is an ancient ruin, after hundreds of millions of years, the divine power that Gushin the Exalted had left behind had greatly weakened. If not for that, how could I possibly enter it through thin air? The sect leader is too kind. Nangong Lu laughed out loud. Tell me, how do you want me to reward you? I don't want anything. Sigh, no way. There must be something you want. Fine, sect leader please give me half of that orange. Nangong Lu was stunned for a moment before he smiled and said, that's all. However, he still peeled the orange and handed it to Su Suonglin, I'll give you a whole one. You're such a strange person. Then I'll give you half. Nangong Lu said and handed over the orange fruit. Su Suonglin's fingertips were bloodstained, so it was inconvenient for him to take it. Thus, he directly ate it from Nangong Liu's fingertips and said brightly, It's sweet and juicy. It tastes good. At that moment, Su Suonglin's smile seemed a little scary under the sunlight. The orange juice stained the corner of his mouth and was licked off by his tongue, like a poisonous snake flicking out its tongue. Nangong Lu suddenly felt a little scared and immediately took back his hand, but then his face showed an annoyed and confused expression, as if he didn't understand what he was afraid of. Su Suonglin suddenly said, Look at that. What? Nangong Lu looked over. After a while, his eyes suddenly widened. His slightly chubby face showed an extremely complicated expression. It's, it? Man-eating pomfret. Su Suonglin picked up the dead pomfret and threw it on the sandy beach. He leaned over and looked at it carefully. The monster with a lion's face and a fish's body bared its teeth, revealing blood-stained canine teeth. Its pair of gray and black eyes were bulging, and there was no light in them. 
Su Suanglin dipped a little of its blood and smelled it. He subconsciously rubbed his bare feet and frowned, ugh, it stinks. He stood up and kicked the pomfret, this should be one of the rare evil beasts in the Jinjinj lake. Although the beasts that Gush and the Exalted left in the lake to guard the holy weapons were mostly auspicious beasts, a long time is enough to change a lot of things. After all ghosts can transcend and gods can fall, let alone a mere divine beast. Nangong Lu murmured, it was it, that wanted me to offer Rong Yan's spiritual core. Everyone outside the illusion was horrified. Except for Chu Wanning, who already knew the truth. The others got even more shocked than before. What? Rong Yan. That's. That's. Some people murmured, and some people had already turned to look at Nangong Si with astonishment and pity. That's his. Nangong Si was stunned at first, and then his whole body began to tremble. He staggered back and fell to his knees. His face was paler than a dead person's and more terrifying than a ghost's. Mother? Impossible, that's not possible. Ye Wangzi held back his tears and said, Ah see. Impossible. He was so mad, his handsome face contorted with fear and anger, grief and horror. His facial features were almost disfigured. He could not hear anyone's words, could not even hear a single sound, impossible. My mother died while killing monsters. Father told me that her heart was pierced through when she was killing a demonic beast. Then he suddenly shook his head and murmured to himself, without a heart. She died when her heart was pierced. He didn't cry. His eyes were wide open with his eyeballs about to burst. He kept repeating in a hoarse voice, from murmuring to shouting, from shouting to roaring, from roaring to crazed raging, pierced through the heart. Her heart was pierced through. His memory suddenly flashed back. That year, he was still very young. His parents and a group of people were setting out together to Jinjinj Lake to seek for a holy weapon. He remembered very clearly because the night before, he wanted to play. He and Nao Bajin went crazy at the back of the mountain until very late at night. He tried to sneak back to his room in the middle of the night and wanted to pretend to be reading a book. However, he didn't know that his mother had come to find him after dinner as she wanted to give him a newly embroidered quiver. However, after not finding him despite of looking extensively at the young master's mansion, she realized that he sneaked out to play again. Rong Yan was a very strict woman with a cold temperament. Unlike other mothers, she didn't dote on Nangong Si extensively. When she came to Nangong Si's bedroom again, Nangong Si was pretending to hold a scroll of the carefree wanderings shaking his head and reciting it. Rong Yan asked him to stop and asked him, what did you do after dinner? Nangong Si didn't know that Rong Yan had already found out that he was slacking. He put down the book, scratched his head, and said with a bright smile, Mother, I, I was reading a book. You were reading it this whole time. The child was afraid of being punished, so after stuttering for a long time, he still nodded, MM, MM, MM. Rong Yan slightly raised her elegant neck and raised her chin. She lowered her eyes and looked at him with disdain. Her eyes were sharp and cold as she accused, liar. Nangong Si was startled. His face turned red, I wasn't lying. Rong Yan didn't say much. She took his bamboo scroll and closed it, asking, all the world does not have to be silent. What's the first sentence? And, and the whole world, and. And the whole world praises it, but not persuades. Rong Yan frowned. She slapped the bamboo scroll on the table and sternly said, Nangong Si, what did mother teach you? It's fine if you play outside until late at night, but now you've learned how to deceive people. Mother. Don't call me. Nangong Si could see that his mother was angry, so he couldn't help but panic. Compared to his amiable father, he was actually more in awe of his mother, who was always dressed in her fighting uniform and had a heroic spirit. You're too outrageous. The little child's eyes reddened. 
he was afraid that his mother would scold him further so he tried to argue, I, I didn't come back too late. I just played outside for a while after dinner. Rong Yan glared at him. His mother, who was originally not so angry, became more and more disappointed as her son racked his brains for more convincing excuses. I came back as soon as it got dark. Slap. A loud slap interrupted Nangong Si's words. Rong Yan's chest heaved up and down. She still maintained her posture of raising her hand. She angrily shouted, Nangong Si. Greed, resentment, deceit, murder, rape, and plunder are the seven things that a disciple of Rufeng sect mustn't do. Where did you learn to lie like this? Do you want to continue lying to your mother? Nangong Si was stunned by her slap. After a while, he came back to his senses. Tears filled his eyes. He felt wronged and shouted, If you weren't so fierce, I, why would I lie? You hit me and scolded me. You, you don't treat me well at all. I don't like you. I like father. As he said this, he ran out to find Nangong Lu. You, stop right this instance. Rong Yan pulled him back. Her face was contorted in anger. She pointed at the tip of her son's nose with a red cardamom finger. Her eyes were burning with anger. Why are you looking for your father? Your father is a weak-willed person and only know how to flatter. He's nothing but a piece of trash. Don't tell me you want to learn from him. Sit down. I don't want to. I don't want to. Rong Yan gritted her teeth and dragged the struggling Nangong Si back to his seat. But as soon as she let go, Nangong Si tried to run again. In the end, Rong Yan had no choice but to raise her hand and release a restriction spell, binding him. Nangong Si knelt on the ground. He was humiliated and angry. Like a caged beast, he couldn't stop gasping for breath. Let me go. I don't want a mother like you. You. You've never talked to me properly. You've never cared about me. You only know how to scold me. You only know how to scold me. Rong Yan's face turned red and white. Her lips trembled slightly. After a while, she said, You stay in the room obediently. Recite the entire carefree wandering manual. I'll check it tomorrow. If you continue to be naughty, I'll. As she finished speaking, she was at a loss. What would she do? What she didn't know was that she had always been firm and fierce. Even when facing her cowardly husband, she would not hesitate to reprimand him in public. But Nangong Si. What could she do? She stood in the same place for a while. She felt bitter, resentful, sad, and helpless. Due to extreme anger, she couldn't help but cough violently. She was someone with an old illness. She coughed continuously until she coughed out a mouthful of blood. But she tried to be nonchalant about it. Before Nangong Si could see it, she wiped it with a handkerchief. Then, she opened her mouth and said in a hoarse and gloomy voice. See air, you're still young. In this world, right and wrong are often not things that can be seen clearly with your pair of eyes. Sometimes, People who are tolerant to you may not necessarily wish you well. People who are harsh to you may not necessarily wish you ill. Your father is weak and incompetent. Besides. She paused. She didn't immediately continue speaking. After deliberating for a while, she gave up on this train of thought and changed the topic. Mother doesn't want you to become a cultivator like him in the future. I don't want you to become a sect leader like him. Nangong Si bit his lip and didn't say anything. You're naughty and mischievous. You don't pay attention to your studies. These I can still let go. But how did you learn to lie and deceive people? Our Rufeng sect has a glorious foundation of a hundred years. It's only because we've always adhered to the character of a gentleman that we have the right to stand at the peak of the cultivation world. Your father has never seriously taught you these principles. But I'm your mother. Since he doesn't want to teach you, I'll be the one to give you advice and repeat it to you again and again. 
even if you don't listen, even if you think I'm harsh, even if you hate me. Father doesn't want to teach me because he treats me as sea air. If it makes me happy, he'll be happy. What about you? Nangong Si angrily said. What kind of mother are you? You only treat me as the young master of the Rufeng sect and as the future sect leader. When I'm with you, I don't even have half a day of good days. I won't listen to you. Rong Yan got extremely angry. An abnormal flush appeared on her snow white cheeks. She covered her face with her handkerchief and coughed again. After gasping for breath for a long time, she sternly said, Fine. If you don't want to listen, I'll keep talking to you. I'll teach you until the day you finally understand. The child was extremely stubborn. He simply covered his ears with his hands. Rong Yan sat on the chair and slowly calmed down. However, her heart was still throbbing with pain. She remembered the injury she received when she killed a demon in her early years. Although she religiously took her medication every day, it still turned into a serious illness. Her illness was getting worse as days passed by. She looked up at the child's rebellious countenance under the candlelight and couldn't help but close her eyes. After a long time, her tone softened and she said, See air, mother can't accompany you for your whole life. There will be a day when I can no longer watch over you and can no longer warn you. I only hope that you can understand in the future. She suddenly stopped talking. That was because she saw Nangong Si squatting on the ground, his little body curled up into a ball. He was crying inside the restriction spell that she had cast. Her child, Si Air, who had always been happy and cheerful, was choked with sobs as she scolded and beat him. Rong Yan was stunned for a long time. She slowly stood up and walked to the restriction spell. She raised her hand and wanted to undo it. She wanted to bend over and hug him. She wanted to caress his red and swollen cheeks and kiss his forehead. But she endured. In the end, she still stood there firmly. She slowly finished the second half of her sentence, you have to understand. Greed, resentment, deceit, murder, rape, and plunder. These are the seven things that I, a cultivator, cannot do. I don't understand. I don't want to understand. I. I. Nangong Si raised his teary eyes and shouted at his mother outside the restriction spell, I hate you. I don't have a mother like you. At that moment, outside the restriction spell, Rong Yan's face was so pale. Her usually cold and resolute face looked as if she was heartbroken. That exact face of her had appeared in Nangong Si's dreams many times for the past 20 years. When he woke up, his pillow would be wet. He remembered how at that moment, he was like a poisonous scorpion, waving its pincers and stabbing its poisonous juice into his mother's heart. It hurts, it was really painful. It's a pain that he would never be free of even after a lifetime. He would never be able to reconcile with himself. On the third day, Rong Yan did not come to the mansion to see him. She only asked a maid to bring him a quiver embroidered with camellias and a letter. In the letter, his mother's handwriting was neat and solemn. He found that there were not many good words in it as she only said that she knew that Nangong Si was practicing martial arts and liked bows and arrows, so she embroidered a quiver for him to carry. She also said that she was going to go to the Jinchinj Lake with his father. When they came back, she would take a good look at his recitation of carefree wandering. She hoped that he would not be playful and capricious again. And what did he do at that time? His anger had not yet subsided at that time. With his heart still full of resentment, he took a knife and cut his mother's quiver into pieces, he threw his mother's letter into the fire pit and burned it to ashes, he tore up the carefree wandering scroll on the table. The young child finding satisfaction in the midst of doing all this. He felt as if he took his revenge on her with these action. He hated her. He wanted to let her know that he would never listen to the teachings of such a terrible mother. He would never compromise. He. He grimaced in viciousness and plotted his way up to the wall. He waited for his mother to lower her head to him, 
to admit her mistake. Or perhaps. At that time he was choosing to be spiteful so his mother would give him some kind words and warm hugs. But she did not come. It did not matter if she admitted her mistake, hugged him, regretted it, or was gentle. He was looking forward to his victory, waiting to declare war on that woman once more and then. Then he had been waiting for her bones to arrive. The sect leader of the Rufang sect was attacked in the forest at night. His wife protected him with her own body. Her heart was pierced through and she died. When the coffin was brought back, Nangong Si stood in a daze on the edge of the Rufang Sex City Gate Tower. White silk and paper money were scattered all over the place. As the only legitimate son, he stood in front of the crowd, waiting. According to custom, when an elder knocked down the basin, the madam's coffin would be carried across the fire pit and would be carried back to the sect. At this time, the first son should kneel down and cry bitterly, cowed out to the ground to welcome the return of his mother's spirit. However, Nangong Si could not cry. He felt so out of it. It seems as if everything was fake and not real at all. The sun shone on the ground, reflecting a dazzling white light. He felt dizzy and nauseous. It was not real. It was not real. If this was reality, what should he do? How could he accept that? In this life, they were now separated by life and death and the last thing she said to him was, greed, resentment, deceit, murder, rape, and plunder are the seven things that I, a disciple of Rufeng sect, cannot do. But what was his answer to her? He did not want to remember how on that day, his hatred was so deep. He shouted so loudly. And outside the restriction spell, his mother's face was so full of pain and sorrow. It hurts. It was really painful. He recalled how in this life, the last thing he said to his mother, was. I hate you. I don't have a mother like you. The coffin was carried over supported by the elder who had broken the porcelain basin on the side. Thousands of people knelt down and wailed. His father had long been sobbing beside the coffin while Nangong Si simply stood there. In his hand, he tightly grasped the camellia quiver that he had cut into pieces. Bright red petals with yellow stamens. The flowers were covered with snow as if proudly sprouting from the cold. It was as if her warm fingertips had just touched the surface of the silk, opening up this beautiful purple and brilliant red. He did not know if it was because she had a premonition before she died, or if it was just a coincidence, but she embroidered them very carefully. The flowers were vivid and lifelike. It was as if she wanted to embroider the love that she did not say, as well as the rest of her advices and instructions, into every stitch and thread, locking them in that small cloth quiver. Nangong Si tightly grasped the quiver. That was the last thing that his mother had left for him in this life. End chapter